So despite having not hurt anyone, Zeke will always be remembered as an accused killer? Unless someone changes the narrative. Okay. Season 3 of Power Book Ghost opens up with the major characters in the drug game trying to face the aftermath of what happened in their past. Tariq is struggling to find his place in Stansfield because they believe he's been in enough bad situations and as much as he was found not guilty, the perception around campus was not innocent. Effie was scared moving to Stansfield and leaving Yale because as a strong intelligent independent woman, she did not want to be perceived as nothing more than Tariq's girlfriend. Elsewhere, Brayden is trying to fix his perceived value, as he dumbly poured out being at the helm of course correct in the court of law, by working at his dad's firm, Weston Holdings. But the reality of the Tejada family has been tarnished as they deal with the death of Zeke Cross, Monet's son. Stay tuned while we dissect Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3 Episode 1. People's perception of Tariq has been bolstered by his reality. The reality being that dead bodies always seem to follow Tariq around everywhere he goes. And he admits this as much to Effie. Tariq, I can handle myself. You know how I feel though. Everyone that gets involved with me ends up just- I'm not, Lauren. Effie, just listen I'm to sorry, me, please. I'm sorry, but I'm not. But with a little support from Tate as he puts Dean Wong in his place. And Effie's suggested quote on perception and truth by Gustave Flaubert, Tariq decided to fight for his place on campus and change the narrative that has been attached to his name. And he did that at no better place than Zeke's memorial, tying his perceived reality to Zeke's death. Although Tariq is trying to fix his outside image, Bash was right. During Tariq's presentation at Zeke's memorial, Tariq couldn't help but wonder who he truly was. Being a part of the drug game is a game of expediency. Eliminating potential enemies that could cause future problems. Bash started to bite more than he could chew and messed around with the wrong crew. His overconfidence got him killed. Tariq's flashback goes to show the internal struggles of the game, and the weight of murder and loss you have to carry when you choose this game. But there is no greater weight than the loss of family with Tariq experiencing this the most. Monet tried as hard as she could to keep Zeke out of the game. She made sure his hands were clean and wasn't part of any drug-related business. Which makes Zeke's death a greater irony. All the Tejada family with all their dealings are still breathing, but Zeke is gone. Monet wasn't able to hold herself during the memorial as she steps out to cry. But Tariq reached out to her as she requests him to help her find whoever did his son. All Monet wants at this moment is revenge for Zeke and to get out of the game for good. But we all know Ghost was the best in the game and struggled with this. Leaving the game is never a straightforward path. As Tariq's grandfather used to say, this game only ends in two ways, either dead or in jail. Getting out of the game, free and unscathed, seems more like an elusive perspective than a concrete reality because the game always brings about new problems. Why must these pale Americans be so crass? Trust us, you would enjoy your evening much better if you simply hand the lady her ring. Did you not hear what I said? No! Please! Hey, wait! No, no, no! It has been ascertained from the new season trailer, that Noma was Mecca's connect and now, with new information from this episode, his future fiancé. As much as the season trailer portrayed Noma as a badass, seeing her in action is scarier as we see her cut down the fingers of an innocent bystander. Noma is on a two-part mission, trying to find out who killed Mecca and where the drugs she gave Mecca can be found. With Mecca and Zeke dead, the penthouse was given to the closest relative of the nuclear family, in this case, Monet Tejada. And Monet, sunk in the depths of her grief, allowed Drew and Kane to stay at the penthouse while she finds a buyer. As much as that moment seemed like a fortunate circumstance, it became quite unfortunate very quickly when Noma stormed the castle. So far, anywhere we saw Noma in this episode we also saw a dead body. As Kane said of Mecca, she rolls deep and she don't play. With her trying to find who murdered Mecca, Tariq had to find a way to not get dead before they even get the opportunity of thinking of how to get rid of Noma a trait he definitely got from Ghost. With Noma giving the old squad of Mecca a chance, Tariq was trying to take Effie out of the game and protect her just like Ghost tried with Angela and Tariq failed to do with Lauren. But we all know, there are no ends to what a woman will do for you when she loves you. And Effie decided whatever Tariq was into, she wants to be a part of it as she is tougher than Lauren. What I do need is money, so if this new connect has some product, let me help you move it. Jesus Christ. I mean, does anyone ever get the chance to say no to you, Effie? Lorenzo, knowing he killed Zeke is being prudent around Monet. He is trying as hard as possible to accommodate Monet's feelings without being overbearing. 
Lorenzo has always been a strong character trying to lead his family how he sees fit. But because of his guilty conscience, we see him allowing Monet to disrespect him in a way he wouldn't have stood for before and trying to give Monet space to grieve. It was interesting seeing Monet talking to Tariq while Lorenzo looks from his perspective. It is pretty obvious that Lorenzo is scared the truth will come out and is sticking close to Monet to make sure he knows all information she receives on Zeke. But Lorenzo's time is limited as he has to find a suspect to take the fall for Zeke before Monet loses her patience totally. It is quite public knowledge that Saxe has always hated the St. Patrick family. He spent the majority of his law career trying to put Ghost in jail but was never successful. And now closer than ever, he believes he can help Jenny Sullivan put Tariq in jail. Although what he doesn't know is, he is being played both by the woman he is trying to start a relationship with in Jenny, which will be discussed later in this video, and Davis with Theo Rollins, his brother. Sax, although very intelligent, also has a gullible character trait and Jenny Sullivan is very much determined to get Tariq and the Tejada at all cost. But as she is on a time clock, is Sax going to find out what she is really up to? Please share your thoughts. Elsewhere, Diana finally got what she always wanted. Going to Stansfield. Lorenzo made that happen and it seems this time it is going to stick for a while at least before Monet finds a way to get back at her. But with Diana at Stansfield, she seems to be trying her best to bring respect and honor back to Zeke's name as she was the one who organized Zeke's memorial from the lessons she learned in her new American Psyche class. Unless someone changes the narrative. Brayden is trying to change his narrative from an Ivy League drug dealer who was dumb enough to sell drugs and snitch on himself in court to an outstanding businessman who has received proper education. But it is pretty clear that this intervention is ephemeral and will eventually be unsuccessful because one thing is clear about Brayden, he loves the game more than he should, damning the consequences. With his father trying to provide a safe and conducive environment to grow and become a better man, Brayden keeps finding himself in trouble that he doesn't have to. All other players that Brayden knows are still in the game because they have to, but Brayden keeps finding himself wanting to be in the game although at this stage he doesn't have to. The promo of the next episode showcases that it was Brayden's idea to sell the drugs Noma provided on Wall Street. I think we're overlooking a sick market. The traders at Weston Holdings would eat this shit up. His father trying to push him away from the drug business and Brayden bringing the business closer to where he is. But nobody was ready for what ensued at the end of the episode. Lauren is alive. And with this new information comes so many questions and potential changes of events that could lead to more death and relationship problems. Jenny Sullivan has stashed Lauren in a safe house to protect her from all who want to kill her. And has gone out of her way to lie to Sax while he risks his life to get her information. From this episode, Kane thinks Lauren is dead and Tariq is struggling to reconcile Lauren's death. It will be very interesting how Lauren's reappearing will impact the relationship between Sax and Jenny, Sax and Davis, Tariq and Kane, and Tariq and his Stansfield family. From this episode we learnt what Davis told us before, it is not the truth that matters, it's how the truth looks. And this episode showed how the major players in the game stopped focusing on the truth but started manipulating it to create a certain perception that is suitable to the general public because at the end of the day, your perception is your reality. That is all we have for the breakdown of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3 Episode 1. Don't forget to subscribe for more Power Series related content and other breakdowns of other American series. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.